Hey everybody, it's David Bott here from Outside Our Bubble, and right before we get into this program, I have to add this piece in because I forgot to talk about it, and it's very important. An RV park is always a best effort install by a Wi-Fi installer or designer. Always a best effort install. The reason is, that is if it's done right, it's a best effort install because there's a lot of bad ones out there. But anyways, best effort install. The reason that is, is because you never know what's gonna be coming into an RV park. It's always changing, constantly. You never know what's gonna be parked next to you. Is it a big rig? Is it small? Is it made out of aluminum? Is it mostly fiberglass? Wi-Fi signal frequencies, radio signals, if you will, are finicky things. They are bounced and absorbed by different materials in different ways. Therefore, the RV park is constantly changing. Then you add in the whole conflict of how many devices might be in the park at one time. Somebody might pull into you and they have five devices. Somebody else might have 10, all of which adds to noise in the air. So anyways, I thought it was important that I needed to make sure you guys were aware of even the best installers will never tell you it's a 100% guaranteed install. It's always a best effort install because it's constantly changing. Now, on with our regularly scheduled program, which is Wi-Fi in RV parks. Hi everybody, it's David Bott here from Outside Our Bubble, and I'm sitting here working on a network right now. This is a network that I'm upgrading for RV Ranch in Keene, Texas, which made me think that, you know, Maybe it'd be a good idea to let, let the RVer know what RV parks go through. And, and sometimes people are quick to write reviews about RV parks that sh say that they're really bad when it comes to Wi-Fi. And some of them are. Some of them, a lot, well, a lot of, RV, par a lot of RP, RV parks are bad in Wi-Fi. And, but it might not be their fault. Let me explain a little bit. First off, a little bit on how, how Wi-Fi works, just to give you a, 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 a thing. Um, it takes some info. It takes two to have a conversation. Just like you and I might talk in person, where we have to be within distance to hear each other's voices and talk. Wi-Fi is the same way. It takes two to have conversation. It takes two to have that data connection. What I mean by that is, sometime you've gone into an RV park and you've pull in and, and you set up whatever and you bring out your device and the Wi-Fi signal is great. Oh, look at that signal. And you connect to it, but it's very slow. It, it's, it's, you, it doesn't work at all or something like that. Even though my signal is really strong, what the heck's going on? Well, that could be because you might look out in a distance and see that they have this one big antenna. And this big antenna is putting out a massive amount of signal. Really strong, massive amount of signal. And because of that, your device is seeing that and reporting to you, hey, look at the signal strength. It has no idea what that antenna is seeing from your device. So while that is putting out a big radio signal and your, and your phone or computer is seeing that and saying, wow, great signal, you're not, when, when you try to talk back, your transmission power and antenna size and everything is not as strong in order to reach them so you may not be able to talk to them. So that can be part of the issue. And if you can't talk to them, if, if the conversation is only going like this, you get the point. So if you're only getting a little bits of the conversation, it's gonna slow down because it has to keep resending that data until it makes sense. So um, that can cause part of the issue. And, and I just wanted to give you a heads up on that. That's where boosters come in, like like the nanostation uh, kit that I showed, how to how to how to make a high powered personal Wi-Fi system for under a hundred dollars. That nanostation is a powerful antenna. It's made to go long distances, and because of that, it gives you your best chance at being able to talk to an RV park. Now, just because you can talk to the RV park doesn't mean they're going to have good Wi-Fi or service, I should say. Let me explain a little bit about that and why you can't be too quick to judge the RV park. First off, if a lot of RP, the RV parks don't have the bandwidth they need to support the network, and that's because they can't get it from the provider. If you're out in the, in the sticks or what have you and you're in a remote location, they may even be getting that internet wirelessly. So they may be connecting wirelessly over a great distance to get that service and they may only get 30 megabits a second. We've actually been in a multi-million dollar RV ranch, or RV park, excuse me, in, in, um, in, oh, oh 
oh gosh, I can't remember the name of it now. Michigan, uh, West Michigan. Uh, can't remember the name of the ranch. Anyways, expensive place, uh, built wise, beautiful park. We were there and their Wi-Fi was really bad. So of course I talked to the owner and the manager and come to find out they only had three megabits of service. Three megabits, not kidding. Why? Because they had two DSL lines. And to come to find out they're, they're right next to a river and on this side of the river, it's considered a state park, which is where they were. On the other side of the river is regular land. Well, the state, the, the, the local government, the town government or whatever county would not allow Comcast to come across the bridge. Therefore, all they can have is phone lines coming across the bridge and that's all they had. Um, so it's not, it, it's, it, the, they, they may not have enough bandwidth to support the RV park they're in and that may not be their fault, okay? So that's one thing you gotta consider. Second thing you have to consider is network and how it was designed and put in. You have people that say, we have internet and they do because they have a router sitting there and they have an antenna and that's that and they call that internet. Obviously that's bad. That's an RV park that should not be marketing internet when they really don't have internet. Well, then you have RV parks that um, try to do it and there's different ways to set up access points in a park. One is you hardwire every access point, which is usually inconceivable because running wires to everything is, even though it's the best way, it's not conceivable usually. So the second best way is to run bridges. What that is is a wireless bridge, five gigahertz. So you have a main antenna, you have a five gigahertz antenna here, which is connected to, to the, the router and you have a five gigahertz antenna here and they're talking to each other only. That's it, they just talk to each other. And then over here, this five gigahertz antenna is talk, has an access point connected to it, which then you connect to. So then you're connecting to that access point and you're going from here, high speed bridge across, out to the internet and back. So if they put in multiple bridges, that's great. And because that one hop, Every hop, you lose data speed. So after the first hop, it's a 50% loss from that point forward per hop. So you've heard the term mesh networks. And mesh networks are where they just put in access points and the access points connect to each other in order to, to make the network. Well, if you're at a place where you're four hops away, you got 50% loss, 50% of that loss, 50% of that loss in speed. So you might start out with, I don't know, just use a number, 100 megabits, 50 megabits, 25 megabits, 12.5 megabits. Well, now you got 10 people connected to that access point sharing 12.5 megabits. So it all depends on how an RV park puts something in and all that all comes down to the installer and if they were looking to take advantage of them and just get the job done quickly or if they were looking to do it right. Because let's face it, most RV park owners, they really don't know. And I can't blame them for that. I really can't. But I would wish they would educate themselves on the different things and I'm hoping that RV park owners might be directed to this video to at least give them some information to be armed with. So if you don't have enough mid with coming into the park, only set up one access point in a meeting hall. You gotta have bandwidth to support the park. Try to do hardwired access points if you can. It's not always feasible. Most of the time it's not feasible. Short of that, use point to point bridges or point to multi point bridges, where you have one access point with four or five bridges going back because it's only, it, it splits the time between the bridges and um, it's not as good as point to point bridges, but it's still a lot better than multiple hops. Now, the other thing that hurts the RV park is the RVer themselves. You guys who come in looking to stream Netflix, Amazon, whatever, that's bad, that's wrong. And I know what you're saying. If I wanna stream, I'm gonna stream. Listen, these are public networks. They're not like your house. You're not gonna get the bandwidth you're gonna get at your house. So if you start to stream, a, a Netflix stream is minimum of three megabits per second for an HD stream of Netflix, okay? You have 10 people, say, say they have 30 megabits coming into the park and you have 10 people in the park who wanna stream something. That's 30 megabits gone, just like that, gone. And so now you're killing the park for everybody else. So this is why streaming is not a good thing and this is why it's discouraged to do that on RV park networks. And in, in the networks that I help design, I literally can block 
to the best of our ability, streaming services like Netflix and Amazon, and because there, there, there are certain protocols that they use, and if we identify the protocols, we can block the protocols and therefore not allow you to connect. So the other thing that, um, so, so streaming is bad, and, and our viewers, I see a lot of that. I see on this network, they hear a Jellystone Park, which I, I, I designed. I can see here, I can see Roku devices connected, televisions connected, Fire TVs connected. And, it, and, it's, and right now they allow it to happen because it's off season here, and we have a lot of bandwidth. So we allow it to happen, but during season, we can, we can eliminate that with a click. Now, also, an RV park has to be set up correctly. And what I mean by that is that if you go into an RV park and you pull out your device and you got a good connection and you do a speed test and you get three megabits down, and then you do a speed test again and you get three megabits down, and then you do it again, you get three megabits down. Guess what? They're throttling you. They're limiting the bandwidth that you're using. And you know what? That's a properly designed network. Don't go bitching that the network is slow because it's not. It's properly designed where it's limiting the amount of bandwidth each individual person can take. And that's a good thing because in today's world, you don't have to have a lot of bandwidth to surf the internet and to do email. You don't need it. Websites are nowadays designed to have high compression because of all the mobile devices. Therefore, you don't need as much bandwidth actually as you used to have to have because websites weren't compressed as much. If, if you're in an RV park and you're doing speed tests and you're getting over and over three megabits, three megabits, three megabits, then, then you know they're limiting your speed, which is a good thing because they're giving you bandwidth. Now, if you see that speed drop off from three megabits to 1.5 sometimes and two other times and whatever, then that means they're running out of bandwidth. And that's not good. That's why they're limiting you in the first place. Get it? Hope so, because I don't, I, I hate to see reviews put out there where the Wi-Fi is slow. Well, it could be slow because they're limiting you, which is a good thing, or it could be slow because you have people that's on your same access point that's streaming, which is gonna hurt you. If you're on the same access point as somebody streaming, you're gonna be hurt by that. Or it could be a mesh network, which then it's their fault, or not knowing, not having it properly designed. Uh, or they just don't have enough bandwidth coming into the park, which a lot of rural parks, that is the issue. That's the key issue. And as much as they want to provide a good Wi-Fi service, they probably can't just because of where they're located. So I hope this makes sense. I really do. And please don't be quick to judge them and, 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 and write bad reviews on RV Parks Wi-Fi's unless you understand what is actually really happening. Is, is it their fault? Is it they have one antenna and a little router and that's what they're calling Wi-Fi? Or is it is it a poorly done network? Well, that's a little bit about what you might want to understand about RV Parks and how they have to operate to some degree and understanding what your role might be, no streaming, and understanding that you're never gonna get service like you get at your house. Don't expect that, okay? If we can all understand that, we can all understand a little bit better with what we can do as our viewers to help everybody have a successful internet experience when on the road. Because you really should only be surfing the web and doing email. You shouldn't be doing anything else in an RV park. It's a public network. In any case, I'm Dave Bott from Outside Our Bubble. I hope this has been helpful to some degree. I'm going to get back to configuring this network upgrade, and uh, I hope this was useful to you and hopefully RV park owners who might have watched it. Oh, wait! If you like what we do, click the subscribe button down there. We're almost at 10,000 viewers, subscribers. We're almost there. We're almost at 10,000 subscribers. So thank you for being subscribed. And if you're not subscribed and you like what we do, please click subscribe down there. Thanks, guys. Take care. Keep safe. I'm getting back to work now. See ya! Hey, let's go watch a movie. <clears throat>